What's up everybody? Just wanted to uh, show you guys what I've been working on here. I've got an LS engine run stand that I built. Um, the whole purpose kind of behind the thing is I do a lot of LS swaps, a lot of harness cut downs. Um, so I wanted something to be able to test the, the harnesses as well as test the, test the engines. I mean a lot of times you know LS's they're so cheap. I mean you get them, you know, somebody find one in the junkyard, two, three hundred bucks sometimes even. Uh, the 48 on it I got for 300 bucks with a harness and all. So, uh, but the thing is, of course, when you go to do that, uh, you don't know what you're getting a lot of times, and um, you want to put it in something, but you might not want to go through all the hassle of putting it in with the thought of, okay, maybe it doesn't have any, you know, oil pressure is bad in it, maybe it's a bad oil pump, or maybe the bearings are shot, maybe it's got lifter issues. So um, you kind of toss in that debate of, you know, do you tear it down? Do you go ahead and pull it apart and, and you know, check it over? Or do you just, you know, throw it in there blindly and say, you know, screw it, we'll find out. So that's kind of the whole point of this thing is I can throw an engine on here and uh, fire it up pretty quickly without having to debate all that. So, and uh, get good readings real quick. And so it's not really a chore to do it. And if there's issues, then I can quickly, you know, hopefully fix them on the stand. And if not, then tear the motor apart and do what has to be done. So that's kind of the point of this thing. That's why I built it. Um, like I said, I do HP tuner stuff, uh, mostly to um, the purpose is you know, adjust the um, idling or such, or unlock the ECM. If somebody's wanting to swap it in something, they want to put a cam in it, um, I can dial in at least idle, um, get the idle going, and unlock the ECM, and then have the harness cut down for them so whenever they go to take the thing home, they can fire it up and hopefully not have any issues right out of the gate. Uh, we're trying to run the thing and then of course after that you have to dial in um, the actual you know part throttle and full throttle and tuning and all that stuff down the road but so that's at least a point that'll get them to where they can start and you know start working on it so well, let me give you a rundown of what this thing's all about so being that I live in a neighborhood um, I don't want to be too loud I don't want to get the cops call, called on me all the time um, so I wired up or welded up some exhaust here Nothing too crazy, O2 bung in it, so I can quickly, you know, pop in whatever I need O2 bung for what I'm tuning on or working on at that point just to make sure that the uh, fuel trims and such are in within check. Uh, keep an eye on that stuff and, of course, keep it somewhat quiet uh, so I don't really tick a lot of people off. So that's kind of what I did there. As far as radiator, um, I went ahead and put a couple of electronic controlled fans on there. Um, I wired them up to where I've got a quick disconnects uh, to where they're easily unplugged. And then also turned down here on the side, I made up these little brackets for the radiator to hold it in place. Um, but these two bolts on each side, it's kind of, it's been uh, drilled and tapped. So they're actually threaded in. So it doesn't take but a minute. So you can take both these four, the four bolts out, two on each side, um, and then unplug those few wires there. And your radiator fans can easily be pulled which the importance of that is kind of cool because depending on what you're doing if you get it on the stand and you need some work done as far as the cam or you know anything that needs worked up front um, gives you easy and plenty of access which you can see there where it comes out at you know gives you plenty of access to the front of the motor to be able to do all that stuff to be able to pull the crank and or the not pull the crank but pull the uh, the balancer and the water pump and all that good jazz so it gives you plenty of room to work um, so that was kind of the point of that uh, so down the road it's much easier to deal with and you're not fighting around a lot of stuff so when there is a problem it's easily fixed. Up front here I went ahead and wired up a relay fuse block for the fans and then of course I grounded, uh, put a bolt in here, welded in for ground. I went over three different places on the, the engine run stand and welded in a few bolts just for grounding purposes so that you're not trying to fight to you know do a wire or some kind of a nut whatever drilling it in or something you know whatever tap self tap or whatever you're not having to fight with that stuff so you've actually got locations to ground where you need to uh, we've got the two signal wires that actually trigger the relays uh, to cycle the fans on and off got those running up front and of course the power wire running up to where it's you know wire nutted to the battery up top here so that's uh, all easily accessible Of course, both the uh, positive and negative, I did the wing nuts on there, so it's easily uh, quickly spun on, spun off. So if you um, hurry up and you need some reason to detach something because you don't want to ground out the hot or whatever, or just disconnect and there you go. So got the power wire leading down, got it zip tied down, running to the back, up to the starter, 
um, where I also have another hot running off of it which goes up to the panel to feed the power that I need up top and then of course I have my starter wire here so that you can uh, which is wired to the key so pretty easily when you go to do a you know pull the motor on or off all you have to do is um, you know, disconnect these right here and that's the uh, starter side done your power the brackets I had that I'm fabbed up for the uh, motor mounts there so clearing the little shorty headers so if you know anything about LS's you'll know that you um, you have fuel systems some that are return and some are returnless so rule of thumb most stuff that is a return system is a lot of times it's going to be your trucks um, things of that nature uh, LS2's LS3's are returnless um, but that doesn't mean that you didn't have a return feed line going to the tank or that it didn't return technically from the pump in the tank um, they do have a return it's just that they don't have a return um, coming off of the rail up top so what I wanted to do is to be able to uh, run either a return or returnless system without having to fight a bunch of plumbing issues every time that I went to swap either one on the, the stand so what I did um, I actually come off of the fuel cell here with a um, line it goes underneath I've got a, a filter uh, fuel filter on the bottom side and then a Bosch 44 style pump um, underneath there too I'm not going to get up there and underneath there and show you but what it does it runs down you can see the two lines coming down I split it coming off of the pump and then going to those two valves and the far valve is set up for that is a returnless system and then the closest valve is a return system uh, so on a returnless uh, I ran this Corvette style fuel pressure regulator uh, of course because you want your fuel pressure to be regulated somewhere around 58 psi typically but um, some of them kind of do change a little bit but so we've got um, this here valve I want to turn it on say okay I've got a return system I'm wanting to run there we go feeds the fuel goes through my thing and that's the active line this one over here okay say well I didn't want to use that one so yeah we'll leave it shut and vice versa so if I wanted to re use a returnless system turn that valve on or return system sorry turn that one off boom then there we go so and that's kind of how that works but um, then I've got three fuel lines leading up to the top I've actually got um, one of the lines here is a return line for the returnless system and then the feeds coming off and I'll show you how I did that in a second here okay here's the fuel lines coming up uh, like I said there's a return line that came off that regulator that we just saw on the bottom side down there uh, and then these are the two feed lines this one here is the return for the um, return system but leading up here to the top of the rail what I have is three lines so I've got this one here with a blue end um, I did that intentionally because on a return system you only have the one line so I wanted to make sure I grabbed the right one no confusion this is solely for a return system so whenever I get a, a motor that has a return system a returnless I'm sorry um, to spin that dude free plug it in tighten it back over it then your fuel lines connected for that and vice versa for the returnless or return system here for like trucks and such I've got both of these here um, basically same thing same concept quick disconnect pull them unplug them there you go and like I said you can direct the fuel by whichever valve you turn at the bottom so making it pretty easy to uh, quickly plumb whatever fuel system you have okay I'm gonna give you a little bit of a rundown on the electrical now um, of course I built a little platform thing here a little catcher so that my laptop doesn't come you know barreling down off the top and wrecking that but um, I've got my key switch of course and crank her over uh, I've got the check engine light right here um, also have of course fuel gauge which does work and it is on empty um, then up here I have the fan switches these are set up to where I can manually kick a fan on um, if somebody does have a truck um, set up and they want to keep a manual fan uh, that's fine and I, I actually there's enough spacing up front on this run stand that the manual fan will fit uh, but regardless I can manually kick on my electronic fans by switch um, a lot of people want to wire in electric fans um, I know a lot of the trucks do not come with electric fans so there is two pins on the ECM that you can repin and control electronic fans adjust it turn it on in the tune uh, there's a way to do that 
So uh, for that purpose, I wired up these fans to where they can be switched on manually by me, or on these two ports here, whenever I get done with a fuse slash relay block uh, for the engine to run for the standalone, I have these two ports here to where I can have the ECM control the fans itself, and then of course you can set the temperature ranges for where you want the ECM to kick on both fans, one fan, so you can do all that in the tune. Um, but like I said, if I don't want to do that, if I want to just manually control the electronic fans, I can kick them on, off, um, or do it the other way, or both. So and there's that. This line here is for the check engine light, mill light. Um, that's what that is for. Uh, so I can basically have the tune or have the um, computer um, kick that on and off when I'm doing messing around with the tune. So I can see what uh, check engine lights and what things are popping up. I can see when there's a light on. Um, this here is the uh, main power, 12 volts. Um, that's actually running off from a fuse block that I put underneath this little panel here and wired in. Uh, earlier I showed you the power wire coming off the starter. It led into that fuse block below um, and then I basically fused off of that um, to make sure we stayed safe here and kept it uh, kept it at where we needed to as water rating. Didn't want anything, a bunch of wires running all over the place around metal and grounding out and arcing and catching fire. Something stupid happening. So didn't make it actually halfway safe. Um, here we have the signal wire for the um, fuse relay block. Um, you need this basically the way the fuse and relay blocks wired up. You'll have your um, injectors, uh, your mass airflow, um, anything that's keyed on. This is the signal from the starter or for the actual key switch starter switch here. So whenever I do that, it will send power to that pink wire. And then basically on the fuse relay blocks that I wire in, um, all you got to do is just tap into that on the other side, and then boom, that is ready to go. And then this last one is actually the fuel pump, uh, the power for the fuel pump. So um, on that relay block, like I said, that's the power going out to the relay, bl relay block, fuse block. And in that, there's a relay set up to control the pump. Um, so then there's a power wire that comes back and goes to the pump there. But basically it's a setup to where I can quickly unplug and plug in a harness within just a matter of, you know, a minute or two. I can plug in an entire harness and have it set to go and ready to start up. So that's kind of the gist of that, the electrical side. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's the run stand in a nutshell. Um, this motor that's on it, uh, it has the dipstick broke off and then the oil pan. Um, so I need to get the oil pan off of it and uh, see about you know, trying to get that thing out. Uh, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and yank it back off, whatever, because I hate working upside down and stuff. So I've got a, a couple engine stands. I'll throw it on and rotate it over. But, but uh, so as soon as I get that done, I plan to go ahead and fire up the 4.8, check out, see what anything's wrong with it, which know my luck there probably is but hey we'll see it's part of the game and uh, go from there but I'll put a time-lapse video so stay tuned that'll show how long exactly it takes to get a motor on and off um, you might be surprised it actually doesn't take any time much at all especially if the harness is already cut down I can quickly have one on and off and fired up in no time so but uh, I'll post up a video later of uh, the actual time-lapse and then also the fire up uh, whenever I get it going so stay tuned for that